<laughs> yeah, you're like a T-Rex. <laughs> Martin's here to get transmission fluid. He's going to show you guys how to service your Eaton whatever transmission this is. It's Eaton whatever 12 speed. Yeah. He's going to show you how to do that. So it's got to have that rating. You can't just put any old gear oil in them. Guys, I might have to retire my lesbian coat. Pretty rough. Pretty rough. We got a trans fluid. Derp. We got plenty of room to get underneath the truck now. And yeah, I'll put a bolt in these. That bothers me. So that right there, a little Allen. It's our fill port. And right here is our check port. And over here is our drain. So up there is where we're going to be filling it. And uh, it's not very fun because there's not much room underneath here. Now this drive shaft stuff, I remember this boy. We tangled at one point. But I'm going to say one thing. This sucker is much heavier than Greg's for some reason. I guess because it's a downsped and they're packing all this heat or whatever. But man, this stupid thing was so heavy. Holy crap. Oh, you know, problem. Stupid thing is seized in there pretty damn good. Um, might just heat it up a little bit, see if that helps. It should, but I just can't budge it. And I don't want to strip that thing out because if I strip that thing out, we're going to be putting it in through the side. All right, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go through the side because uh, it's damn near impossible to get that plug out and I don't want to mess with it. So we should be able to fill it through here. If not, I don't know. It might squirt everywhere, so. Really nothing on this plug. That's good. That's what we want. I don't know if you guys could see that. Nothing on that plug really. Pull a drain out of her. We're gonna put that on over here. So if you guys ever drop your phone into a bucket of gear oil, that pretty much cures it. Spray it off. Oh, it doesn't even smell anymore. Awesome. There's a dog. Where's the dog? Where's the dog? Boof. All right. I have to go and get a little hand pump because I don't have one. That I'm going right off to the road. Watch for cars. Okay, I'm watching for cars. Because that is just going to make a whole huge mess. And we don't need it. So, yeah. Couple that. The phone falling in it. That's no bueno. You can't get to that top plug. You can use a pump and fill it out from the side. It takes two gallons on these endurance. And when you start getting fluid coming out like that, that's how you know you're full. And they are a six millimeter. And there's O-rings on here, so make sure they're in good condition. So you don't get any leaks. Good to me. Wipe everything down. And now we're done. And that's all it takes to service these. Again, two gallons of PS386 and don't strip your freaking plugs out. We finally got our other shock. Now I zip tied it to compress it. Now we're gonna slam it on down in there. It's like a bunch of your stuff that you want for your trucks. Thank you. 
Yeah, don't show her, but she wants to talk to me on filming for you guys. So the reason why I have to compress this is because A, it won't fit underneath the cab even with the jack. But B, is because I can't get that bottom bolt on because the shock just wants to expand. We got our bottom bolt on. Cut our zip ties. And just like that. So technically you shouldn't reuse those bolts because they're stretch bolts, but we don't care. How oh, awesome. Martin got my shocks fixed. The truck now will hopefully ride as well as it used to. Looking forward to that. I just took off the decals from the worst experience of my entire life. Uh, never have I ever worked with a carrier that made me feel like it was working with a bunch of high school girls. It was terrible. So they're off my truck, on to bigger and better things. Hello, fellas and ladies. Today I'm gonna run the overhead on this truck, Tiny Dancer, because it's got about, what, 10,000 miles since we've put this engine together. And I just wanna see how things are looking up in that top end too, so. Um, not a big job, but we got some things to got to take off to get to the valve to pull the valve cover off and make life easier, like the airbox. So, oh man, the neighbor's already cutting his grass. So anyway, shouldn't take long, but you know, famous last words. It's so also in order to get to our hole to turn the engine over. I'm gonna take this whole stupid plastic compressor muffler out of the uh, or silencer, however you want to call it off of the front of the engine so we can get to our spot where we can turn the engine over. That's all that is. It's just a compressor muffler. It's supposed to silence the compressor. There's that freaking bolt. There is. There's one you can't see. There's three. There's one in the back here. There's one here. And there's one under there. And you're going to take the stupid box off to get to the hole where you can turn the engine. See this black hole here? Right there. That's our hole we gotta get to to turn the engine over. And that just so happens to block it. <laughs> I guess it works. <laughs> Should've loosened this pipe first. There we go. Butter. Like butter. Don't let me forget that rag. That's the plug that's at the front of the engine. And then this allows you a three quarter inch uh, turning tool bar, AKA torque wrench in my um, scenario to spin the engine over. And if you look here, your husband is so smart. This gorgeous black balancer that I painted See that letter down there that I'm pointing to? Probably won't focus. So it's marked. There's one up there. C, B, pin, insert pin, and an A. So basically, every revolution, um, basically, of, what, two revolutions of this engine sets the whole overhead. And we're going to turn it over. First, I'm going to go some of my torque wrench real quick because I got to assemble that. We're going to stick it in there. I'm going to turn it over to A and I'll show you how that works. And then we'll pull the valve cover off that way when I get dirt in there. So you do, need, you do need an extension, a short one, because the torque wrench itself is not long enough to get in there. And then slightly longer ones will not go in there either. So your extension will go in there. And that's basically the compressor. And then you put your torque wrench or your in our case, it's a torque wrench, but if you have a long, rod you'd like to use, by all means, go for it. So there's our pin, and there's our A mark. So we want to go line up on A and 
We may be on number six or number one. That will determine when we pull the valve cover off. I like to start with one and go back. So this is what you're aligning it with. And this line right here shows you that I, I drew this line on a balancer and this is the line you're aligning it with. So your balancer, focus, stupid thing. Your balancer will have these marks. They're kind of like lines. They're drawn in dots. And if you're smart enough, before you put that guy on or when you do find them, you go ahead and you draw yourself a nice line with a pen marker like I did. And then you can easily see them. So this is what we're using today. This is for the Jakes. It's a seven millimeter gauge, okay? On this engine, it takes a seven. Exhaust is 27 thousandths feeler, and intake is 14 thousandths feeler. So this is all we're using. And that's how you set the overhead on these engines. That's all it is. The Jakes are super easy. There's no injectors to set. Oh, look, there's my drill bit <laughs> that we lost. And uh, there's no injectors to set because this is common rail. So to loosen, six millimeter allen wrench for the set screw three quarter inch to break the locking nut so then we get to work so for your guys' sake i am starting off on the number one cylinder because i'm going to show you um how to do it on number one it'll be the easiest so we're turning the engine 360 degrees and the reason being is once i get to number six or if i went from six to one i'll probably be a tired fatty and i'd be like <laughs> For best filming effect, we're gonna start from the front and then I'll do the rest probably off camera or maybe we'll time lapse it. I don't know if there'll be enough time. But if you remove this, which I don't want to because I'm being lazy, you'll be able to spin this engine over a lot quicker. There we go. It's on compression. So one tricky thing I want to mention, okay? These are your exhaust, the shorter ones, obviously, as you could see. Because when you're over here and you go to number three, then it flips this way. So you gotta pay attention. This is our intake, our 14 thousands. And a lot of the times you got oil underneath there. So you gotta kind of play with it and it can't, it won't even fit. So we are tight. This is our exhaust, and again, it won't even fit, so we are tight. Now, what I like to do is I like to go kind of get that oil out of there, and then zip it down, and this is what you're looking for. You're looking for light drag. So what I mean by light drag is tighten this, so this starts to kind of, see now it won't move. That's light drag right there. I'm good with that. So now you want to hold it. You're going to tighten your jam nut. Against the Allen. And verify we're still good. So I'm going to zip this up a little bit. And there's a torque spec for this. You look it up. I don't know it. I'll just torque them here in a second. There we go. Obviously, it's all tight, so I don't care. Make sure we've still got light drag. Really nice. I like that. So let's loosen this guy. You want to be careful. You don't want these bridges to pop off. Alternate legs so you don't get a cramp. So we're tight right now. I'm happy with that. And I did move on, huh? so. There we go. It's 
Still good. All right. Perfect. That's what we want. Why is it not good to have a tight engine? Well, fuel mileage. If you have a valve hanging open just slightly and the valves are really tight, you're going to get poor fuel mileage and you're going to get just everything's going to perform poorly. You want to have that. You want to have that play. Jam nut for the Jakes is a half inch. The uh, adjuster nut is a two and a half inch Allen or inch, two and a half millimeter Allen. So then you take your jig, jig rocker, move it back, loosen this guy. And again, you're doing the same thing. You want slight drag. Clean some of that oil off your bridge. Stick it on in there. And run her down. And then what you're looking for is slight drag. Too tight. Happy with that. Keeps moving. That's all right. Set it and forget it. One slight drag. I think that's about right where it needs to be. So that's basically you setting your overhead on these. And then your firing order, you're going in, you're going in a, in a sequence. So when you go to B, you go to number cylinder five, because it's, the firing order is one, five, three, six, two, four. So you go A, one, B, five, then you go C, you go to three. And then you go A again, you go six, then you go B again, two, and you go C again, you go four. So that's how it works. So it's not like you rotate all the way over. Hey. It's not like you rotate all the way over and you're doing one, two, three, four, five. You've got to follow a sequence. And you know which ones are loose. You know what? What is that? It is my brackets. What? Oh. My, my fancy new brackets for my truck that probably very few people actually have because either they're rice or they're amazing. Oh, those. Oh. So I'll stick my feeler gauges back in there just to make sure that we're still good and we're perfect. Now, what I'll tell you is you got to play with it because there's an oil film between there and it's going to get suctioned. This this bottom foot on this rocker is going to get suctioned to that bridge and it's going to be a pain in the ass to get that in there. But that's perfect. This is perfect. Let's check the Jake rocker again. One hundred percent perfect. That's what you want. You don't want too tight, but you also don't want too loose. Now, what's better, too loose or too tight? <laughs> Depends scenario, on what you're talking about. In this scenario, I'm going to tell you the looser, looser is better than tight. I'm going to go through the other five cylinders. I'm going to do number five next, which is this one, and then. Uh, we're gonna basically go through it all and I'll tell you guys what I found when I do the rest. I, I think they're, they're all gonna be kinda on the tight side. So we're now on number cylinder three, which is also the third one that we're doing. And this is your perfect example of being a little too tight. See, that moves okay, but it's still too tight. This intake gauge, feeler gauge on the intake side is not okay. So we're gonna fix that. See, so I roll the engine over when I'm done and I check for looseness. And uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give you guys a little tip. 
like I did earlier. Don't forget which one's your intake, which one's your exhaust. Because when I went to number five, I knew I screwed up. But when I got done with it, I was like, I have to go back and fix that now. Because I went 14 thousandths on the exhaust and 28 thousandths on the intake. And it's supposed to be backwards. And the reason why is because these valves confused me. So I'm going to fix that real quick. Remember, your exhaust valves are your tall valves. Your intake valves are your short valves. Because this goes to one, one, two, three, and the four, five, six, they go this way. So I was just being dumb. But I got it. I found one intake valve that was loose, and then everything else I found was really tight. Well, really, it's kind of a harsh word to use, but on the tighter side of everything. So I think this should be a little bit happier now that we adjusted it. And uh, we'll put the valve cover back on and we'll run her. What says you? Or do we want to run it with no valve cover to make sure the jakes are springing back just right? Oh, wait, stop. Well, let me forget that rag. <laughs> Success. That was me actuating the jakes. So, if you saw what I was checking over here, doing that, making sure the jake detents are working. Because if not, these things would just flop around and make ratchets. So that's what I was checking for. And then we actuated the front cylinder and uh, the front cylinder and the back cylinder of the jakes by pushing on this here with the screwdriver. And you heard the jakes actuate and everything looks good we're not peeing oil anywhere um let's put the valve cover back on it and put it to work i'm confident 100 percent in my wife's ability to set her own overhead now on high maintenance <laughs> have we ever checked it on my truck no i never had the valve cover off on that damn thing oh, maybe we should one day probably should because I doubt anybody's ever looked in there. Probably hasn't. All right. Can we put the rag back in the turbo for now, or while you put things back together? Good thing, good thing she remembered <laughs> that. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. You see the drippy, I fit it up. Hop in my car and a giddy up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Pick it up. You see the drippy, I'm fitted up. Fit it up. Hop in my car and a giddy up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Pick it up.